Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2buzz.com and in this video we are going to do the full review of this Zolo Android phone and the special thing about this phone is that this is the first Android phone to come with the Intel processor. It sports a Intel processor that's a 1.6 gigahertz Intel Atom processor and uh, this phone runs on the Android 2.3 that is the gingerbread but this phone is going to get the ICS update and is this phone worth it so let's have a look at the same first let me give you a physical overview of the phone and the phone sports a 4 inch lcd screen and the quality of the lcd screen i would say is very good and the resolution is a little bit weird it's 600 by 1024 pixels which is slightly more than traditional android phones and due to that high resolution uh, everything looks very crisp on this phone and this phone is marketed by Lava in India and it's known as the Lava Zolo and I have done a detailed unboxing of the same so you can check out that video if you want to know what comes inside the box. Now let me give you a quick physical overview of the phone and on the top we have this on off power button and a 3.5mm headphone jack and if we move towards the side we have a volume rocker and this is the micro sim tray and uh, uh, Lava has provided a pin and you need to insert this pin to get the micro sim out and we also have a dedicated camera shutter button but again I'm not a big fan of this I'll tell you later it's a little bit hard to depress and we have speaker one speaker over here and one speaker over here that's dual speakers and on the bottom we have nothing but a micro USB slot that will be used for charging the phone and the microphone and this is a micro HDMI slot uh, so you can connect it to your TV if you would like and nothing over here and moving towards the back we have an 8 megapixel camera and it also has a LED flash nothing but the Zolo logo over here and here we get the Intel logo because it's using the Intel processor and on the front uh, again we have a ambient light sensor proximity sensor a very good speaker I would say the call quality on this was actually very good and I'm happy to say that the call quality was excellent and I would rate it as 10 on 10. It is as good as some of the Nokia and the Motorola phones that I've seen. And on the front we have a, a front facing camera that is a 1.3 megapixel camera and this phone also has an ambient light sensor. Moving towards the bottom uh, we have four touch type capacitive buttons and we have the microphone. So the overall the phone is actually pretty light and it is just a 4 inch uh, phone but it looks a little bit bigger. I don't know why but uh, this is the Galaxy Nexus and if I place it over the Nexus you notice that it is a, just a tad bigger. The, uh, the Nexus is just a tad bigger though the Nexus has a pretty large screen that's a 4.65 inch. So even though the phone has just a 4 inch screen. Uh, I would say it looks as you are using a 4.2 inch or a 4.3 inch phone. Again regarding the specs it runs on the Intel Atom processor that's clocked at 1.6 gigahertz. It also has a dedicated GPU that is clocked at 400 megahertz for good 3D gaming. And uh, let me show you the Android version. Currently it ships with the Android 2.3.7. Moving towards the UI, uh, again Lava did not do a lot of customization so it is kind of a stock Android UI, uh, just the app tray is a little bit modified and I appreciate that you have these quick uh, icons where you can toggle, for example you can quickly toggle the brightness etc. That's nice but uh, you'll find mostly the stock uh, Android experience with this phone, not much of tweaking was done by Lava. And we have actually five home screens one two three four and five and whenever you hit the home button it will always take you back to the center home screen one thing i found missing in this phone is that it does not have a physical led notification light and again i would say the speakers on the phone though it has two speakers are a bit weak to my liking uh, the clarity is there but in the loudness department it's not uh, very loud now let's move to the performance of this phone and actually I was a little bit worried how this phone would perform because this is the first Intel based Android phone in the world and uh, actually uh, as you know Android does not work on the x86 platform but Intel has modified it 
and there is a basically interpreter uh, that runs this phone and i have to say this phone was brilliantly fast i was really impressed with the speed of this phone it is a very fast phone i have to say and uh, intel has done a great job with this phone and now i will just test the web browser of this phone and for that we'll just go to tech2bus.com for now one complaint i have is this keyboard i don't like it a lot i don't know what is wrong with this keyboard but i don't find it comfortable to type I'm making a lot of mistakes on this keyboard and let's go to just tech2bus.com for now and as you noticed it loaded the page pretty quickly it renders it also pretty fast uh, kinetic scrolling is very smooth now what we going to do is let's go to this HTC One X review and uh, this uh, page has some flash videos so we're going to play those things just let's move to this orientation and let me click on this hi there this is Ranjit from and as you can see uh, it plays the flash content within the browser without any issues it's pretty uh, smooth I would say no issues with that let me get out of that and now we go to one more website that's the Engadget website here is the Engadget website let's go to the same because this Engadget has a very long uh, web page and this is the mobile version so and as you can see again it is pretty smooth I would say no issues let's go to desktop version and again if you noticed it loaded it brilliantly fast so with the web browser I don't have any issues with this one it is very fast web browser and it can also play flash and now let me uh, let us uh, do the uh, pinch to zoom gesture and as you can see again that also is not an issue it is silky smooth in that department also it doesn't have text reflow but that's okay if you press this plus or minus button then it does the text reflow but if you just zoom it like this it doesn't do that so if you want text reflow hit this plus or minus button and it'll do that so that's fine and also one more thing I wanted to show you that is if you notice how crisp the text is because of the relatively high resolution screen the text is actually very crisp so in terms of web browsing I don't have any issues with the phone it is very fast and it can load all the web pages without any issues let's get out of the web browser and again regarding the UI uh, as this is a stock uh, android experience uh, expect the same and i did not face any uh, what do you say lag or anything like that while testing this phone for the last two days or so so i tried to load a lot of apps etc and no issues and none of the applications crashed even i tried to load heavy apps and heavy web pages and none of them crashed so intel has done a pretty good job with it and now uh, let me talk about the video playback this phone can play back uh, videos at 1080p and even 720p without any issues i'll show you the same i have some two test videos this is a 1080p video and i'm going using the stock uh, what do you say video player to play this video and as you can see this is a 1080p video and it is playing it without any issues it's silky smooth and this is one more video this is a 720p video And as you can see it is so smooth no issues with that so it is good for playing even video no issues i just found that this portion of the phone gets a little bit warm not hot while stressing it like playing 1080p videos or like or that so that's one thing but uh, it's not hot it just gets warm that is common with almost every android phone now uh, moving to the battery life i would say it is average it is uh, not bad but not even extraordinary i would say average to above average but one thing i do not like is that uh, lava does not allow you to open this back cover so the battery is non-user replaceable and uh, lava did not give any specs of the battery on the box or something like that but but i googled around and uh, reports say that it is a 1460 milliampere battery and in my testing uh, 
with 18 hours of usage of this phone, 27% uh, of the battery was left. And uh, with that, I was using the phone. The screen on time was approximately about two hours. Uh, I made 15 minutes worth of voice calls and 25 minutes of, uh, what do you say, web browsing. So let us see the battery usage. And as you can see, it's on till 18 hours. And uh, this is the battery usage. So with regular uh, usage, it should last you one day without any issues. And I would say that with very light usage, you can get one and a half days worth of battery life. Another one thing I want to uh, stress is that I was a little bit worried. How would the Intel Atom processor behave? Uh, does it heat up the phone a lot? And I'm really happy to say that the phone does not get heated up with normal usage. Again, when you play a lot of games or when you are playing high definition videos, as I said earlier, this portion gets a little bit warm but not, no issues intel has done a great job the battery life is good and the phone also it does not heat up a lot now moving towards the storage some of you will not like this this phone comes with an internal storage of 16 gb that's built in and sadly uh, lava hasn't provided any micro sd slot or something like that so you are stuck to that 16 gb of internal storage and let us look at the storage now and out of that you get available space approximately about uh, uh, 10.5 gb or so and uh, one good thing is you get almost 2 gb of space for your app so i feel for the apps there is plenty of storage but if you store a lot of movies etc on your phone you might find the 16 gb of storage a little bit limiting now that we have cloud storage services like google drive etc um, it is okay but again i would have preferred that they would have uh, allowed a micro sd slot or something like that or they would have built a model with 32 gb of internal storage now let's do some gaming and i have done some gaming and it was pretty okay now let me run this uh, angry birds i know that it's not uh, processor intensive but let's just play Again, I would say the screen is actually pretty good, but uh, if you move it to extreme angles like this, then it fades a little bit. But for normal usage, I would say no issues with the screen. It's pretty nice. And again, if you noticed, uh, again, the Angry Birds loaded pretty fast because this, as I said earlier, overall, this is a very fast phone. Uh, let's do this. Again, if you notice, it is silky smooth. No issues with the same. Let me get out of this. And uh, now to give you a better idea about the gaming performance, uh, let me run this, what do you say, Nina Mark 2 test. And this will uh, stress the GPU. I ran it uh, earlier also and I got a FPS of 36.6. Let us run it again. And this benchmarking software uh, stresses on the GPU performance and I'm getting a good FPS about 40 odd it's dipping now to about uh, 28 29 again it increased to about 40 again do notice the resolution is a little bit weird on this phone that's 600 by 1024 pixels so it has to crunch a little bit more pixels compared to normal Android phones that have a resolution of about, let's say 400 by 800. And uh, you can say that we got a score of, uh, what do you say, 37 FPS with this phone. So again, I would say uh, based on this Nina Mark 2 graphic test, you should be able to play most of the games without any issues. And the graphic processor in this uh, phone is a Power VR SGX 540. I've also run some other benchmarking tests like the Quadrant. So you can check the score here. And the score we get is 3957, again, which is a very good score for Quadrant. And on the ANTUT benchmark, we get a score of 5808, which is a very good score again. Now, moving to the camera performance, uh, the rear facing camera is 8 megapixel shooter, and it can also shoot videos in 1080p and even 720p videos and uh, this is the camera app and we get a lot of options actually it also has a burst mode etc and you can toggle from here 
between video shooting mode or what do you say the static shooting mode and uh, i would say the camera performance is actually pretty decent with this phone and it's pretty nice but uh, and i have done a detailed in-depth review of the camera performance of this phone so if you want to know more about the camera performance please check out that video overall i would say the camera is above average but not the best but does a decent job even in low light conditions so overall how do i feel about this phone this is actually a very good phone i could not find any flaws with the phone uh, in my testing i this phone did not hang any time or any application crashed erratically or like that so in terms of stability etc i have no problems with this phone and also as i said earlier the phone was brilliantly fast so this is actually a very good phone and i have to say kudos to intel for launching uh, the first uh, intel based android phone and they have done a great job because it is overall a very nice phone and uh, but it does have some issues like uh, i don't know why as lava has launched this phone specifically in india uh, why did they opt for the micro sim and also the uh, limited storage that is just 16 gb it would have been great if they would have added a micro sd card slot and also uh, why did they opt for a non-user replaceable battery also coming down to the pricing of this phone the mrp of this phone is approximately about twenty six thousand. but uh, as of now you can get this phone in the local market for about 21 or twenty thousand. overall i would say this is a very nice phone also it is very comfortable to hold no issues with that but i would say that if only lava would have priced this phone in around 16,000 or 17,000 bracket it would have been an excellent phone. I hope this uh, review helps. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.